How are you? Well, there is tension in America. There is tension associated with what we're talking about today, which is the police and some communities, some uh, uh, demographics like young people uh, with certain minorities. Often they feel like they're uh, like there's a polarization, like there's two sides. You're either sympathetic to the cops or you're sympathetic to the plight of those in a different situation. Many people feel like they're, um, they're taken advantage of and they're, un- they're treated unfairly. And, and so sometimes in their frustration and over the last year and a half or so, as you, you know, we've had some rioting in Ferguson. We've had it in Baltimore. There was a r- riot in, uh, in Oregon, Portland, Oregon. We had a riot, you know, back in, a number of years ago here in Virginia Beach. Sharon and I were down at Oceanfront uh, in 1989, and we were, uh, uh, my parents were visiting from out of, out of state. Her parents, we were together, the six of us, <clears throat> and there was a riot. We were down at the Oceanfront when that riot happened, and uh, her, at the time, Sharon, her, her uh, dad owned a business, so we barricaded ourselves in the business. And uh, as the, and if you remember, if you were here, or you remember how that riot went, the police left to go get their riot gear. The, the rioters were kind of, had their heyday going from shop to shop, busting into it. And it's pretty scary. <laughs> we, uh, we were thinking, well, what's going what's gonna to happen? And maybe you've been in that situation, maybe you've, were, you know, or maybe you've just watched it on TV, but sometimes out of the frustration, this is kind of <clears throat> the fermentation of, of a lot of frustration. So we felt like it was something that we should address uh, as, as Christ followers, talk about it, and see what God has to say about our response to, uh, to police and uh, even though we have a diverse group here, we have a multi-generational, multicultural church, and so there's people that have different viewpoints in this, in this church. Uh, but there is a way to go about uh, uh, re- honoring people who protect us. The, in fact, the Bible talks about it, that we honor people. And sometimes that gets very difficult for people, and sometimes it gets very difficult on, depending on the circumstance, on the situation. You know, some minorities, they talk about, they just have a different life experience. If you talk to uh, a lot of black people, for example, they'll tell you that when they're raising their kids, they have the talk. This is something that is not typical in a white home, but in the black home, it's the talk. On what, what it means is when you get pulled over by a police officer, there's certain behaviors that you need to do, and they, and they say, well, make sure that have your, your hands clearly seen on the on the steering wheel and, and how you're going to address the officer and m- make sure and move slowly. And, and, and so there's just different viewpoints that sometimes we, we, don't, we have a hard time connecting and understanding each other. And, and, and sometimes there's feels like there's this gulf. Of course, every profession has its problem children. And the cops would be involved in that, but not just them. I mean, any, any area of authority... You're, you, people have a chance and an opportunity to abuse that authority. Certainly parents. There's certain, some parents that abuse their authority that they have over their kids. There's teachers that abuse their authority. There's coaches that we know of that have abused their authority recently. There's, there's pastors that, are, that make my profession look bad. Make it hard sometimes for you to invite people to church. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we know what kind of, pa- well, there's like a few of them out there, but they, they kind of sully the name of all of them. And that happens in every profession, and police officers are no exception. There's, I'm certainly not defending the actions of every single police officer, but we are talking about police in general. We're talking about that, the, the authority that, that is there in, in our society and how we're supposed to respond to that. Now, I went to um, the 4th Precinct, which is the precinct our church is in. And I told the captain, Captain Yarborough, I said, you know, we're going we're gonna to take, this is police week, just in case you didn't know. This is police week where all throughout the nation, they kind of recognize and honor police. And, and today in specific, May 15th, is Peace Officer Memorial Day. That's why I'm wearing this, this ribbon. In fact, our usher's are going to give you all a ribbon. They're going to pass that out right now. And, and when you wear it, you're just kind of recognizing, hey, this is for the officers that have actually given their lives for us. And we have officers in, in our community that have done that. It's all throughout Southampton Roads. <clears throat> and they normally take a wreath 
and they do a, 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 a ceremony, but because that's on a Sunday, they're going to be doing that tomorrow down at the ocean front. But we're doing that. We're, and, and so I went down to, uh, to uh, the fourth precinct. I told Captain Yarbrough what we're doing. And, and he, was, he, was, he said, you know, there is a tension that hasn't been there in previous years. There's, there's a golf, and he goes, I appreciate you guys doing that. I pre-. And we brought him, we, said, we told him, we said, well, we want to bring you, eat every cop in the fourth precinct a gift on behalf of Vineyard Community Church. He goes, that's wonderful. So we had in mind we were going to bring him a basket with, you know, cookies, homemade cookies, all that. And so he got back with me about a week later. He goes, you know what? No homemade stuff. So I think we're still earning our right to be trusted there, you know, but we ended up giving him little cups with stuff in it. Here's a picture. We just did this a couple, a couple days ago. There's Captain Yarborough in the back and, and uh, we brought him some, each police officer got a nice little hand note in there and some, some goodies in a, in a cup from us. And just to say, you know, we, we do respect what you guys do. We love, we, 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 we appreciate it a lot. And uh, then I talked to Chief Severa, who's the chief over the, uh, uh, over Virginia Beach, told him what we were doing. And I just said, hey, would you just say a couple words to our church about, uh, you know, recognizing what we're doing? And here's what he said. Here's a quick video. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank Vineyard Church for allowing us to be part of this uh, presentation, for being part of this uh, event that you're doing at your church. I'm Jim Severa. I have the honor of being the chief of police of the largest municipal police department in the state. We're 806 sworn officers. They do an absolute fantastic job on a day-to-day -day basis. Your church is located in the 4th Precinct. If you took the 4th Precinct out of the city and put it by itself, it would be one of the largest cities in the state of Virginia, if you can believe that. It's over 125,000 full-time population. So the officers of the 4th Precinct work, um, while not the busiest precinct because they're not at the oceanfront in the summer, they are continually extremely busy in the, um, what they respond to in their area of concern. One of the most interesting things about these young police officers, and it needs to be said during this particular uh, week of Police Memorial Week, Police Memorial Day, is um, most of society does not go to work wearing a bulletproof vest. Most of society is not going to work being armed. These officers do this every day, day in and day out. There's a great line of a fantastic book that I'm sure you're very aware of, and it says, Greater Love hath no man than this to lay down one's life for a friend. Well, if I was to have written that, and I wasn't asked to write that section of that book, I would have said, greater love has no man than this to lay down one's life for a stranger. And that's what cops do. They go out every day, and they do things for people they've never met, they have no connection to, and they will never see again. And that's huge when you think about it. We had an incident last night where an officer in the 4th Precinct came upon someone who was homeless. This gentleman just fell upon bad times. The officer interacted with him. The officer took him to a hotel down at the oceanfront, paid for the room himself for two nights to get this man back on track with some help from social services. That's what cops do day in and day out besides lights and sirens and everything else that the public has to see. So we appreciate the fact that your church wants to step forward and honor the men and women who wear a blue uniform and who go out every day and, and perform these heroic acts on a daily basis. So we do want to honor the police in, uh, in our country, in Hampton Roads, specifically in the 4th Precinct, and just talk about four ways. We're going to look at four ways that we can respect them and, and honor them. But before that, I want to just look at four, four uh, types of authority, because authority is is uh, something that sometimes people have a, uh, have a, uh, they're unclear of how authority works and how to respond. So uh, there's four kinds. Well, number one is there's personal authority, personal authority. And that's authority over yourself. This, we so call this self-control. Sometimes you might, people don't see that as, as a form of authority, but <clears throat> the, the most challenging person you will ever lead is yourself. But where you have to l help yourself do the right things <clears throat> you might have a, a, a thought of maybe a written down plan of what you want your life to be like, or maybe it's not written down, but you have a dream or a vision. And then helping yourself move in that direction, that's very difficult. And you have the authority over that person. Nobody else does. It's you. And so our job is to have a, we, so we're all entrusted with authority over ourselves, stewarding our own body, stewarding our own minds, 
our souls. And God has given a, a restraining mechanism to help, <clears throat> to help the governing authorities in each one of these. And this one is included. There is a restraining mechanism to help us to go towards right and to avoid wrong. And God hardwired it into us. Notice here in Romans Verse 15, chapter 2, it says, they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts. <clears throat> their consciences also bear witness and their thoughts sometimes accusing them and at other times even defending them. What's he talking about? He's talking about this law, the, right, the law of right and wrong, of morality is hardwired inside each person, in their hearts, the Bible says. Everybody knows right and wrong. You say, everybody, yeah, well, the Bible says that that's God has put that in us. So that we know this is right and this is not right. Now, sometimes we don't want the answer. So we justify or make up stuff, rationalize. And if we tell ourselves something long enough, we can actually start to convince ourselves of that. But the restraining mechanism that helps along with that is, is our conscience. And we get a guilty conscience when we're doing something wrong. We're thinking, yeah, I probably shouldn't be doing this. It's a guilty conscience. The Bible says that if you... If, if, if somebody rationalizes or justifies and continues their behavior long enough, they actually, their conscience becomes deadened. It becomes seared like with a hot iron, the Bible says. And so we can actually start to keep off that restraining mechanism that God has put in us. But if, we're, if we invite our conscience into the process, that's part of what God has designed to help us as we are governing the author we're governing authorities over ourselves, our conscience. Number two is relational authority. <clears throat> relational authority most commonly is found in the family, particularly as kids are growing up. Par parents are given authority to help with their kids in making good moral decisions. And so the Bible, in, in, for example, in Deuteronomy 6, says that it's parents' job. Parents, and we're, we're to teach our kids what God wants us to do, the, the law. This is what you do, this is what you don't do. Parents, grandparents, we're, we're, that's our job, to help with that. <clears throat> and then the restraining mechanism that is in place is discipline. Here's one example. Proverbs 13, 24 says, He who withholds his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him diligently. He talks about this aspect of, of discipline. Now, specifically, he says the rod. Now, many people see that as, that, actually, that's where spanking comes from. It's, you think, we, I don't know if I believe in spanking. Well, <clears throat> that's probably a different subject for a different day. We spanked our kids, and, and uh, uh, it worked for us. But we're not talking about abuse. Obviously, God is not interested in child abuse. There should be, there should be restraint there. But, but when children are young, sometimes that concrete pain, if they're running towards the street and then you swat them on the butt, it says, hey, that's not good. And you're making sure they get it because th that would be in danger to their life. Or, you know, every parent is given their authority to say, this is the kind of discipline I want to I use. But the discipline is to help restrain them from, doing, from wrongdoing. Hurting themselves, hurting others. And hopefully if it's done well, it continues throughout their own life. They start to figure that out. That helps them to figure out right and wrong as they <clears throat> go into school, go into their work career and all those kinds of things. So disciplining is, is the mechanism, specifically the rod. Then it, the civil authority is another authority. Another authority to help. <clears throat> and we see this go all the way back in the Old Testament. You have the New Testament. You have civil authorities, not primarily to bring charity or even help with economics, but it's to help with the moral well-being of society to bring peace. That's their primary mission. Now, hopefully that there's other aspects to it and there should be, but that's their primary goal is to, to make sure we can live peaceably with each other. You know, it's interesting, this whole aspect of civil authority, because when the New Testament, particularly like when, when uh, the writers are writing, the civil authority is hostile to the Christian faith at that time. When Peter writes, he's going to end up being martyred. And so you think, well, what would he say about the civil authorities. When Jesus was, was crucified, that was an illegal uh, trial that happened at night by the Sanhedrin, the way they arrested him. Everything about it was a kangaroo-type court. And yet 
Jesus told Peter, because Peter was going to take, he did, he picked up his sword and he cut somebody's ear off. And Jesus says, no, that's not how we're going to react to civil authority, even when they're in the wrong. So here Peter says this, interestingly, he says, uh, submit yourselves. He's going to be martyred by this civil authority, but he says, submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human authority instituted among men, whether to the king as the supreme authority or to the governor's who are set by him to punish those who do wrong and commend those who do right. And so there's this, when we see, particularly when civil authorities are not doing right or not upholding their end of the bargain, there's this tendency to to, uh, take up arms, to riot, to be violent, to do something more aggressive, to get their attention. And over and over you see in Scripture, the Bible says that's not the way. That's not the direction we go. Martin Luther King, during the civil rights movement, that was his, his message. Because even within the civil rights movement, there were some people that said, no, we're going to be violent. We're going to be, we're going to be aggressive. Black Panthers is one example. But there was others. Same thing happened with Gandhi in India. There was a, a factions that say, no, we need, to, we need to be violent. We need to be aggressive. And Gandhi said, no, that's not the way we're going to do it. So this idea of submitting to authorities is, is recognizing that, that uh, we can make changes and we make changes. It's, it's, submitting doesn't mean we're not going to fight for change. It just means that we're not going to do it through violence. We're going to do it through respect. There's a different way. We're going we're gonna to still, we're, there's peaceful protests is a very powerful tool. There's a lot of things that we can do, but we do what we do with respect. Romans 13.4 says, talking about the restraining mechanism of civil authority. It says, but if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They're God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Now, that's kind of a rowdy job description in my book, you know, is agents of wrath and the sword. Now, I don't know too many people that use a sword today, right? It kind of went out with the samurai. Now people, you know, now it's, it's the pistol, right? Or the, uh, or the prison. There's, it's, it's a, these are forms of punishment for wrongdoers to help bring civility to our communities. You know, it's interesting. There is a difference between discipline, which you see in relational authority, and punishment, which you see in civil authority. The purpose of punishment is to inflict penalty. The purpose of discipline is to promote growth. That's what we're doing with our kids in our homes. The purpose of punishment is on the past, what you, did in the, what you did wrong. The focus of discipline is on your future, what you can be. And the attitude behind punishment is justice. The attitude behind discipline is love. So there's different authorities. You have personal authority with the conscience. You have uh, relational authority, like in the home, which you have the rod and you have discipline. And then you have civil authority for wrongdoers, which is the sword, which is obviously the sword is not the first line of defense. It's the last line, but it is part of their job. It's part of what they have to do. Bring the sword, bring the, the, the gun, bring prison, all those things. And then lastly, number four is you have spiritual authority. <clears throat> God is in, interested in people. He's interested in making sure we can live at peace with one another. And so he has these different levels of authority. And, but the biggest level of authority is, is his authority. The, and, and we see this in Galatians 5 when he says, the Spirit gives love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And then he says, he says that there's not a law in the land that wouldn't embrace these. He says there is no law that says these things are wrong. And so God himself begins to work inside us, not just external forces saying you must do right, obey this law, but from within, God transforms us, takes people that don't give a rip about the law, don't give a rip about other people. They're, some of them are on a mission to hurt other people because they're so hurt, or the way they were raised, or, and, and God then gets a hold of their heart and transforms it. It's what we, that's what we buy into. That's what happened to me. I was just doing life. I was a wrongdoer. I was, I was dealing drugs I was, I was not interested in obeying the law. I was in high school and God hit me between the eyes and I gave my life to Christ, transformed my life and I changed. It just changed me from the inside out. 
That's the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit to change a human being. And, and, and it, it, so the restraining mechanism is the, is the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit changes us. And, and, and not a just change, it's not just a one-time thing, but it goes on and on. God constantly just says, this is the way to go. Because each day we have to make choices, right? Each day we, we make decisions. So those are the four kinds of authority. And what we can do with the civil authorities all of these authorities, but specifically the, the civil authorities today, is we show respect. We show respect, even when respect isn't given to us necessarily, because it's not dependent. Our behavior is not dependent on other people. We do it because it's right, and we know it's right. Peter says, show proper respect to everyone, no matter who they are. Everybody is worthy of respect. About six weeks ago, I was driving uh, into a store, a little out of storefront area at the corner of uh, Newtown and Virginia Beach Boulevard, and I had to get in there, and then there was two cop cars kind of parked, not, they were like parked squirrely, you know, and, and, and I was trying to get by, and th- there was three cops talking to each other, so they left me enough room, I figured, to get through, so I'm trying to get through. What well, turns out the reason they parked weird is they didn't really want anybody going through. I didn't get that message, you know, I'm, I'm texting on my phone or something. No, I didn't do that. But so I'm, I'm trying to get through. And so one of the cops, I might, and we're real close by, you know, I'm, I'm working my way through and the, my window's down and the, the, one of the cops yells at me. He goes, Hey, you can't go through there. I don't want you. And he starts yelling at me. So I thought, well, okay, I got the message. I'm not supposed to be going through here. So I said, okay, well, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't realize that. And I said, but you know, you can't talk to me like that. I said, I, you didn't have a sign here. I didn't know. And you can't yell at me like that. And he looked at me like, what'd you say to me? <laughs> and then he looked at his buddies and they looked at, we're not helping you, bud. You're on your own on this one. Yeah. <laughs> and so he didn't say anything, but, and I was respectful. I didn't like give him the finger or something. I just said, hey, you can't talk to me like that. I'm a person too. And, I'm, and, I, dem- and I, I deserve respect as much as you do. So I, I backed up and found a way, a different way in and all. But we don't have to go around being afraid of police. They're people. They live in our communities. We have police officers in our church. They're, they're people just like us. They just go put our uniform on and they help, they help uh, institute the law that, that we vote in. And so, but we, we show respect because when you say, hey, I respect you, or you, if you go to the court and you call the judge your honor, you're not saying he's an honorable person. You don't know what he's like at home. He could be a total jerk. Well, you're respecting his position. As a judge, you know, yes, there's, you, you have honor and you respect that person. So we, we need to recognize that. But there's, <clears throat> let me give you four reasons why we should respect everybody. Number one is, is everybody is made by God. God made everybody. Before a cop is a cop, the cop is a person. Psalm 8, 5 says, you, God, made man inferior only to yourself, You crowned him with glory and honor. So everybody is created by God. And because of that, everybody has has inherent dignity. There's people that do worthless things, but there's no worthless people. There's people that do wrong things. There's people that do evil things. But God made everybody, and so everybody has value. Number two is because it shows I know God. It says something about me when I respect somebody, regardless of their behavior. 1 John 4 in the Living Bible says, if a person isn't loving and kind, it shows that he doesn't know God. And God, for for God is love. So God, when you look at Jesus, the way he interacted with the people that treated him, that that poorly, civil authorities, uh, at his trial, he always responded with respect in those those situations, understanding people had dignity, even even though what they were doing was wrong. And why? Because he understood God's love. It was, a, it was, Jesus was on trial as much as anybody else. How was he going to respond to this, to these people? And that's our, that's, that's, that's us as well. If we've invited Christ into our heart, if we had let the love of God dictate what's, what, what we're going to do, it's going to change how we respond regardless of how somebody else is responding to us. And so somebody else, they, 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 they may not be responding well. You know, police officers are human like everybody else, right? Don't you wake up some days and you're not, you're not having a good day? And so they might not, they might've had an incident right before that. In my situation, I, maybe, maybe there was a shooting or something or something, or maybe somebody had just robbed a, a, 
a store and then something bad had happened and, and then here's me driving by, you know, you know, my own little world. And then they react like that. So we have to cut people slack, right? Number three, because I'll get back whatever I give out. I'll, give it, I'll get back. It's, it's this law of reciprocity. What I sow <clears throat> is what I will reap. And so when I sow disrespect, when I, don't, when I, when I, when I treat people one way, they're, it's likely they're going to treat me back the same way. Have you noticed that? You get up in the morning, you're, you're, you're up, well, you get up on the wrong side of the bed, and it seems like everybody does, you know? It's not you. It's just like a bad day. Everybody is mean today. It could have started with you. And then the reverse happens. When we come into, in, 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 throughout our day and we're kind to people, people tend to be more kind back. And that's true with civil authorities. It's true with cops. How we, how we respond to them. How we, how we treat them. And treating them more than just trying to get out of a speeding ticket. You know, just, you know, just in our day in and day out actions. The Bible says, a man's harvest in life will depend entirely on what he sows. And so we sow good things into people's lives. I, you know, I would challenge you just over the next 20 days, just choose somebody, maybe at work or at school or somebody in your home where you're going to treat them with more respect, intentionally treat them kinder, and with more understanding, more patience, see what happens. That, it's likely to transform that relationship. And so what you sow is often what you just get right back to yourself. Number four, because police are governing authorities. <clears throat> that is their position. God says he's instituted governing authorities. Romans 13 one says, let everyone be subject to governing authorities. From the king or the president all the way down. We respect them. One of the ways we do that is we pray for them. You know, we can often have an uh, impact in our own community, but our impact obviously is much smaller when we go nationally. But what we can do is we can pray. And when you pray, your world does not remain the same. We change and we can, uh, we can lift up uh, people that are putting their life on the line for us, helping them to figure out when they're in dangerous scenarios and when they're combating, rioting, and all of the challenges that happen. We need healing in our, hand, in our land. We really do. There's, there's, we don't, it's not okay just to step back and observe and say, wow, everything's messed up here. No, we can actually step in because God calls us into the kingdom of God that we actually play a role. We can do it through prayer. We can do it through how we talk and encourage people. We play a role in it. Romans 13, 5, the last verse on the outline says, the police aren't there just to be admired in their uniform. God who has an interest in keeping order and he uses them to do it. That's why you must live responsibly, not to avoid punishment, but also because it's the right way to live. So police help keep order in our land. And they, they, they serve. And they serve and they, they, their, their service primarily is to bring protection and bring peace to our land. And, and we get to play a role. We, we have to have a vision. That something's got to happen. And, God, and you know what? It starts with us, really, when it comes down to it. It starts with us saying, you know, let's, be kingdom bringers, the kingdom of God, bringing love, those things that the, the Bible talks about, that governing authority, where we bring love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, those things into our relationships. I mentioned earlier the riot that happened in Portland, Oregon, that happened in December of 2014. It was interesting because there, that, that riot, there was that protest that went in. It started out as a protest, became a riot. The police had their riot gear on, their riot helmets on. Some people had already been arrested. And there was a little 12-year-old boy that showed up to, the, to this uh, protest and riot. His name was Devante Hart. And he shows up and he's wearing, he's holding a sign <clears throat> that says, um, free hugs. And you may have read about this, but he, so he has this sign, free hugs. And, uh, and so the, the, one of the cops notices him and he, and he, and he motions over to this, this kid to come over. The kid comes over and the kid's crying. He goes, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm concerned about kids my age 
that are minorities and they are treated poorly and bad things are happening to them and adults, you know, in my community, bad things are happening to them. And, and I want to do something to change the situation. And so this cop, he kind of just clues in. He goes, you know what? He goes, I'm so sorry that bad things are happening to your friends and to your parents and your parents' friends. He goes, but I want you to know that's not going to happen on my watch. He goes, and he points to the sign. He goes, can I have one of those? And the kid goes, sure. And they hug. Now, this was not a photo op, but a journalist was there and caught it on, on, on a photo there. The free hugs. And then you can just see Devante Hart just crying. The cops hugging him, smiling. And it's just a, a, a I think this is the kind of thing that it's going to take for healing in our land. So what I see when I look at that is I see a, a kid who's very concerned about his future in a land that says, hey, we, have, we, we, we want a diverse land and people are welcome here and there's, we'll, we're here to protect you. And, and then there's a cop who's very, he's hugging somebody very different than him. But he's reaching out and he's going, you know what, I'm going to bring healing to this situation in my own way. Is he solving the national problem? No. Is he doing his part? He is. He's doing his part. We each can do our part where we say we're going to bring healing. Now, some people just have issues with authority. You know, they have issues with parental authority. They have issues with school authority. They have issues with their boss. They have issues with spiritual authority. And it's just, it's not cops. It's just, they have, they've been hurt and they don't know, maybe they weren't raised with proper authority structures and they don't know even how to figure it out. So we play a role. We step into that and we go, well, let's do our part to bring healing. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Well, Father, I, um, as we take this, this day, Peace Off for Memorial Day, and we've never done that in this church before, but just to honor police and um, authorities that you've put in place. Look at your word. What, what your word says about how we're to respect and how we're to interact with authorities. We could have said many other things, but by the guiding and the direction of the Holy Spirit, these are the things that, we, that I just felt like you were saying. And, and so, Father, I just lift up our police officers in our fourth precinct in Virginia Beach, Hampton Roads. And Lord, I just, I, I pray that you protect them and help us to remember, help us as we're looking at, as we wear this ribbon, but beyond the ribbon, day in, day out, help us to remember the sacrifices that they make for people that they don't know, strangers. They go from one dangerous situation to uh, living in an environment where there's distrust and disrespect and suspicion. Father, I pray, Lord, for healing in our land. We pray, oh God, for police officers in our community and across the country. We know there's many good people who are striving to keep people safe in our communities, and we pray for them, Lord. And for those, oh God, who make mistakes, for those whose hearts may not be empty of suspicion of stereotypes, we pray for them as well. May they come to know you. May they come to serve your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray for them. Lord, we pray for the, well, the, the well-being of their families and their safety. We also pray, Lord, for communities that have been disrupted and hurt. That we can play a part in that. And Lord, for each one of those authorities, the most important one of all was recognizing your authority over us when we allow your Holy Spirit to change each one of us. Just to come and surrender once again. Maybe it's a fresh surrender for you. Maybe you've never done that where you've said, I want God's authority in my life, his word and his Holy Spirit to guide me. Then you do that, just say, Holy Spirit, I invite you to be my guide, my counselor. Bring healing to me 
Maybe you have a hard time with authority yourself. Say, God, help me to see authority not as a threat, but as a positive thing. Help me to learn to respect and honor authorities and submit to them. And it begins by submitting to the greatest authority of all, which is Jesus Christ. Would you say, God, I want, I want you in my life. Come change me. Make me the kind of person that, you've, that you want me to be. Not just a do-gooder, but somebody who does good for God. In Jesus' name, amen.